But we've got breaking news up first. Yes, we do. We've got some <coughs> massive news this week. Massive? Uh, yep. Bowden Barrett off to Japan. No, Does it I get bigger they, than that? I, One think point they knew. I think they knew it all along. The only people that didn't know was you and I and the fans. Okay. I'm pretty sure the New Zealand Rugby Union knew, the Blues knew. It was always in the It was in his contract. contract. It was in his contract. But yeah. $1.5 million, this is yeah. New Zealand dollars. 750000 pounds or something like that. Amazing. Uh, for six months. For six months. He's still going to be available for the internationals, yes. which I'm not sure how that works. You know, he's if played you don't, over X amount of games, hasn't he? Oh no, that no, was just the, that was Australia. just the thing, wasn't it? <laughs> it's Australia and yeah. South Africa, mate. You've got to play in New Zealand to qualify to play for New Zealand, but he's managed to dodge that loophole somehow. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, he might got, play a couple games for the Blues. I've got absolutely nothing against it, mate. Absolutely nothing against no. it. He he's a great servant to New Zealand rugby. He's he arguably. He's had a bit of a break. He's playing now. Um, and he's going to go off and earn some serious coin for him and his oh, family yeah. for six months. I think that's a pretty good deal both ways. Well, the thing is with that is they they should go chase the money because rugby is such a short, has such a short lifespan, you know, as in for the players. Yeah. They've he's, only got maybe a maximum of sort of 12 years. For the real good people, you oh, know, like you Daniel be, Carter, yeah. kind of at his top level, but then maybe for the lower ones, six to ten years. If you know, you're, they, if you're and, looking and, at wingers, and they do not earn enough money to last them retire on. Yes, yeah, then they need they they're going to need a job after international Definitely. rugby, unless you are Bowden Barrett or Daniel a Dan Carter. Carter, who's admittedly. Played on and on and on and yes. on, and has made a lot of money. And yeah. it, since he's retired from New only, Zealand rugby, but not only from rugby, with Daniel yes, Carter. for sponsorships yeah. and things like that. So he's twenty nine. So yes. in reality, you know, he's probably only got one more World Cup cycle left yeah. in oh, him. Easy, yeah. You know, and then he's then he's then his real value. Sayonara. Then his real value drops, doesn't yes. it? Yes. Oh, definitely. It'd be interesting to see how long. Like Dan Carter's thirty eight and still yeah. going. What a arguably guy. still could be playing at the highest level. Yeah. Um, it'll be interesting to see how Bowden does because you know, a lot of Bowden's game is on a speed. Yeah, and how much of that speed will drop off as the years go on. You've definitely seen that with Dan Carter. You know, He was a quick man yeah. and he's not so quick now. He's more a playmaker than a... He's a playmaker yeah. now, yeah. So um, 84 tests, that's pretty impressive though, eh? 84 test, Barrett. yeah. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't have thought They've he... They've called him a veteran. I'm not sure he's a veteran. It's Although really... Although he's 29. <laughs> yeah. But like, <laughs> he doesn't seem 29, does he? Can I just say, I'm a veteran. <laughs> I'm 40. He's not a veteran at 29. No, that's what I mean. He's just been around for a long time. I can yeah. remember when he first came on the scene and he was in, it, he he was was in a, England. He was in England doing the All Blacks with Ben Smith. Yeah. And I looked at those two boys and I thought, what are they doing? Two skinny white, white lads, <laughs> you know, they they didn't look like they could, uh, you know, they, they looked like they're going to get blown over by a yeah, strong gale. Yeah. And they've ended up becoming two of the best All Blacks, you know, in recent history. Yeah, definitely. So good, good luck to them. But you've got a great story up next. Yeah. So uh, Warren Gatlin has been sort of criticised by the New Zealand sort of... Uh, Media, fans, public. Fans, yeah, anyone. Every man and his dog, red, <laughs> including me. <laughs> that his methods in New Zealand aren't working. So for Wales and the Lions, they worked a treat, didn't they? Because, you know, before he actually got the Chiefs job, he was one of the best coaches in the world and arguably still is. But for the Chiefs, it's not really working. And his game plan is the game plan... The same as it was, as he just bought it over? No, nah, I think this is really ridiculous. But the thing is, is that before lockdown, the Chiefs were good. The Chiefs were great. Yeah, I mean, they still are good, but they've just lost four on the trot. I think the Chiefs, or, I mean, we did build them up on the show saying that we thought that they could win the whole thing, Super Rugby, and they started off the season looking like they could win yeah. the whole of Super Rugby. But a bit's changed 
other squads have strengthened. They're playing players only... have also come back. Yeah, yeah. Such uh, as you know, Bowden Barrett has come back from the blue or for the Blues. Yeah, but but the big the big thing here is is that if you looked at the Chiefs starting lineup, they were pretty strong. Yeah. Before lockdown, I think okay? they still are. Though. Yes, but when you when you're playing New Zealand teams week in week out, and you get a couple of injuries, yeah, you need your strong bench to come on. Kills you. And they really don't have a strong bench, and they really lack in that tight five. Yeah, area. So you know, it's all well and good in having Aaron Cruden and Damien McKenzie, but if Anton Leonard Brown are playing, the ball. yeah, God, it was a big hole there, eh? Huge on 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 the weekend. There were yeah. some real rookie moments where young guys are making poor decisions. Yes, they're good players, but they're making poor decisions. So I feel really, really sorry for him. He is one of the world's best coaches. Oh, We've covered that yeah. on this program. Yeah. He has been in every game. They've lost by a drop goal here and a yeah, or a try in the last game. You know, he's so been in it. he's been in every game. It'll be a real strength of the man to come through. It's you know he's got another round to go. So yeah. you know, I I think they are now out of the competition. Yes, oh, 100%. but if they they've got a buy now. Yep, they've Going got a buy now. If they can come back and win every game from now on in. And their first one That's up will, will be the Highlanders. Yes. Re- repeat, won't it? Yeah. So he's got a chance to turn them around. And with a week off, it'll be really interesting to see yeah. what happens. Yeah. So fingers crossed for him because I think he's a good man. I think he's a damn good coach. I think he's got a decent team to work with, but he doesn't the have... The ball hasn't bounced his way no, at the moment. Or not the at the moment. Way. The next massive story up is... The Leicester Tigers fiasco. Uh, Tua Langi looks like he's set to leave Leicester Tigers. Yeah. But obviously the massive problem that comes with this is all the premiership clubs got together before um, the 25% pay cuts and they all agreed they wouldn't poach each other's players. So his problem is, is he can't really play in England, which means he's then not available for England He's not available for the Lions. Well, are they going to change? Are they going to change the rules? Potentially, they've said no. They're not changing okay. the rules. So, will Tuolangi go or will Tuolangi stay? I, I've heard he doesn't want to go. I've heard all he wants is the ability in the future to claim back money lost. That is the one sticking point. So, whether or not Leicester Tigers have an agreement with him, yeah, which is that he can claim back lot. Loss of earnings at a later date um, if he signs the the new contract, but there's a, there's a whole you know Jordan think, Tough former he's gone he is he is in quarantine in New Zealand apparently really he's left the club not to say that he's not going to go back there yeah but he's moved moving back to New Zealand that wow. m- that looks great for the Crusaders yeah <laughs> I, I'd gladly take and it's great uh, for New Zealand rugby player. again you know yes why did he leave but you look at you look at all of this right if you're a New Zealander now. Where are you going to get rugby? Where are you going to play rugby? Yeah. In New Zealand? Yeah. Where are you not going to play rugby? In England. In Europe? Yeah. Not for this foreseeable future. And at best, you're going to play rugby behind closed doors. Yeah. With clubs that are fighting. I mean, some of the behavior of the premiership clubs is horrific. Yeah. But with Manu... You know, and it's sort of along the same lines as Bowden Barrett. He's chasing the money. No, he's not and chasing again, the money. No, he's not chasing the well, money. Well, I think he should. I, th- I think he. I think he. I think he should because rugby is such a short game in in a player's life. He should chase the money. Players. Do you know, do you know why I want him to chase the money? Why? So he doesn't play for England. Yeah. <laughs> because let's be honest, England with Tuolangi is a different kettle of fish compared to England without him yeah and there's no one that can do what he does no I, he's definitely not ch- he's played for Leicester all his career he went to his he went to school well. in Leicester yeah, he's got yeah. a big family connection he's not chasing the money if he was chasing the money he would have gone, would have gone last ago. year yeah he hasn't didn't go last well, after year the World Cup. Yeah, true. so it's a sad sad tale the problem is is that Everyone wants rugby players to be honourable and to, you know, 
have all those values that we love about rugby. No, but but some I of the get it. some of the Premiership Club owners are businessmen. Yeah, so therefore cutthroat, cutthroat, and they're not they're not meeting this the the standards that they want from their players. No, you know mm. they're not the only ones. No, that's right. The only one that I know of is Northampton are saying you take fifteen percent pay cut, but once the fans come back, we'll pay you your money back. Right, because that's fair. That is fair, and that's yeah. come from Chris Boyd in New Zealand, mate. That's why. What a guy! What a guy! So yeah, so massive, and it's not just him. There's six players. That, uh, they they're worried, obviously, that they could lose up to sixteen players. I think they'll end up only losing potentially two or three. To Alangi, I will. I can just see he will stay at the club. Yeah, we'll see. Time will tell. Time will tell. The beast, mate. The beast. If you're a front row forward right now, you are celebrating his retirement, the aren't beast. you? <laughs> oh, you are. You are. So he is um, confirmed that he's retiring from rugby, but he's gone straight into a coaching role at the Sharks. How good's that? Hasn't left it for very long, has he? No, I wonder how good a coach he'll be. Well, he's, surely he's, he's not just. He's, he's got just some tricks go of the it. trades, eh, that he can pass on to the. So he's played. Um, 117 times for the Springboks. Very, very experienced. He should just go in as a um, scrum coach. Oh, uh, it's easy to say that, mate. No, I said he should. Yeah. It, Not he will. No. I, I don't I, know what kind of coaching role he's got with the Sharks. Do you know the big thing about someone like him? It's like Dan Carter coming into the Blues. All the young guys just listen. Yeah. So, you know, when Dan Carter speaks, everyone listens. They're like, yeah, oh, of course, Dan Carter. Yeah. yeah. And it, the beasters will be exactly the same. Oh, yeah. If he's got a young prop, they're going to listen to him. Yeah. And they're going to go, I am listening to the best prop forward, yeah. best front row forward, maybe, yeah. One yeah, of. One of, definitely the best prop to ever grace the game. That's a huge call. But it, you can't, That's I mean. That's a huge call. World Cup, That's a good poll. World Cup final takes apart the second best team in the world at that moment. Yeah. Now, people were saying that England were the best team in the world before well, before the final. Well, they we've been proved <laughs> we've been proved wrong because I was saying that I thought England were going to win that final. Yeah. Stupidly, now when you reflect back, England were never going to win the final. You know, it's like they played their final on the scene. They played anyway, their final. We're not getting into we're not that. Gonna, we're talking about but the boost to take apart your opposition like he did. Well, yeah, the, the youngsters will listen. The youngsters will listen, yeah. So a real Even if they're not in the sort of position that he played, I think they'll still, because he is so experienced and such a beast. What are the fans going to do? Listen. Obviously, normally, whenever he got the ball, all you heard was boost. boost. Do you reckon he'll be like water bottle every time he goes on the pitch? They'll go boost. Maybe that'll be class. <laughs> Coach boost. <laughs> yeah, no, great. Great for, great for him. And, yeah, and, and good to see that he is still in rugby. Oh, yes. You know. I reckon he's one of those guys. Look though. at that smile. I know. It's fantastic. It's a great smile, isn't it? But he's one of those guys that I don't think he's going to, you know, like certain players, they retire, like Richie McCaw. Richie McCaw's retired. Yeah. And he'll take a long time out of the game. Yeah. And he might eventually come back. Maybe. But he may not come well, he back. He may not, no. Dan Carter is going to finish playing and he's going to go straight into coaching. Yeah, he is, isn't he? He can't get enough of he the stuff. He loves the boys. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously, um, the beast is the same. Yeah. Can't get enough. Can't get enough. Yeah. And good on him. Yeah, definitely. Next story up, we've got Eddie Jones. Good old Eddie Jones. Steady sniffing Eddie. round. Hoskins sits like too. Dog, eh? <laughs> <laughs> now, apparently, talking about Eddie Jones sniffing round, apparently he's part of the reason why Bowden Barrett's going to Suntory. Oh really? Because Eddie Jones has a has an advisory role ah. in Suntory. Do you know what Suntory is? The company, because you know they're like this Toyota. Yeah. You know, and if you go there and you play for Toyota, you get a Toyota. Do you? Well, yes. Yeah, so I'm just making like this stuff Blacks up. Get right, the, if you go to the, the All Blacks get, get a um get a Ford. Get a Ford, yeah. If you go to Xerox, guess what you get? You get a photocopy of a machine, <laughs> don't you? Suntory, mate. Do you know what they make? What alcohol. Do they? <laughs> so those they lads, free booze. and apparently I'm they make so apparently they make some really very very interesting like fizzy drink, very strong alcohol. Right. Yeah. Interesting. 
So, so we're talking nine percent. That's a great story, Damien. Diet, Diet Coke. Coke. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so Jones is after uh, Hoskins. Hoskins to two Yeah. So you look at who he's got in the past. He um, was one of the main reasons why who left in the past to go to go to play for England. What was what was the most recent one? Uh, Brad Shields. Brad Shields. So mm. he tapped up Brad Shields, promising yeah. him Pierce some Francis. Answer. Pierce Francis. Yeah. So both those guys. Uh, the f- halfback, scrum half. Oh. Uh, um, Hines. Hines. Willie, Willie Hines. Hines. I think that was a bit different. Willie yeah, Hines had maybe, been over yeah. in England yeah. for a number of years. True. Guess what's happened to the other two that he's tapped up? Who? Well. Who are they? You know, no. The, the oh, the other Pierce, two. Pierce, yeah, Pierce played, Francis yeah. Yeah. and um, what was the first one? Brad Shields. Brad Shields. Guess what's happened to them? Well, they haven't been playing. They're not been playing, mate. They've played like three games. <laughs> I think Pierce Francis played a few more than Brad Shields. Anyway, Hoskins Satutu has just signed... Two year, year deal. Two, two year, year deal, deal for the Blues. So is Mark Talia. Two that's year deal. A, that's a great shout, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So the Blues and the New Zealand Rugby Union have done well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, Hoskins to Tutu, I can imagine, will be part of the All Blacks' wider training squad. Yes. Maybe get a run out. Get him a game straight The away. problem is, is that who are you going to play, when you're going to play? And we're going to talk about that a bit later on. But, um, yeah, so Eddie Jones sniffing around another New Zealander to bring him over to... And I don't blame him. No, God, no. I'd be on that phone too. Well, come on, uh, Smithy. No, what's his name? I don't even know. Fozzie. Fozzie. (laughs) What's his name? Ian Foster. Ian Foster. Ian. Right. Fozzie. Um, Daniel Carter. I love the story, by the way. Yeah, fantastic story. Um... I'll, I'll actually read the little caption, eh? Yeah. Uh, New Zealand great Daniel Carter turned out for his childhood rugby club as he continues preparation for his return to Super Rugby. The 38-year-old who has won two World Cups for the All Blacks played a full 80 minutes for Southbridge as they beat Wes Men- Mental. <laughs> Melton. Mate. Melton. Men- they, are, they are mental on the when they have a few beers in them, mate. They they're uh, mental. 58, 50, 58, 54, 14. And uh, Daniel Carter, he only scored twelve points. I'm guessing he just got the conversions. Couple yeah, he set up a couple of tries. Did I mean, he did, he, did you watch the game? I watched highlights. Did you everything I could, everything and anything I could find on YouTube? Really, I was all over. He still looked good, but did he? He was playing some rather rotund uh, pub. Rugby players. I mean, like, we are talking about, you know, sort of fun rugby. Yeah. We're not talking about... Rude. Semi-pro sort well, of stuff. Well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe no, I'm wrong. I don't it just when I, when I saw Bridge, it, uh, when I saw it, it, it looked... I have a look? It looks like there was some uh, some abilities out there that were awesome, and then there were some guys who were developing as rugby players. But how cool would that be to... You know, he just turned up on the day and played as well. No training. There was so... There were so many cameras there when he arrived. Dad dropped him off as I well. I love How that as well. That? Oh, man. But he, he's, he, I think he's going to play against the Crusaders or be on the bench for the Crusaders on the weekend. You think so? Well, I kind of hope so. I kind of hope so. And I kind of hope that when he runs out there, if he runs out, the Crusaders fans will give him a standing ovation playing for the Blues. I really hope we don't have this horrible thing which could happen which is he gun he runs out there and the crusaders give him a bit of jip the fans give him a jip oh he's got to have a bit of jip no nah. yes no nah, he's a legend mate he is a legend but surely the players have got it just no, the like players. No, no, no 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 the players oh, the players Again, oh. i'm talking about the crowd yeah like a like boo nah no nah, don't, don't do boo, mate can't Look, do that. standing of eight well, if he runs out on that pitch on saturday is it sunday saturday You've got to give him a standing ovation as a Crusaders fan. Yeah. I will be standing in my lounge giving him an ova- a standing ovation. No, are you are You better not. If you do, <laughs> I'll cut you down. But it is the biggest game of the... And I, we did pick this at the start, didn't we? Saying that this was the game. This could be the one that seals the deal for whoever wins it. But definitely whoever wins this game is, is uh, looking very, very good for the rest of the competition. The last... 
thing I want to talk to you about, the last breaking news, is the rugby championship. There is little bits of rumours coming out now yeah. that is all going to be played in New Zealand. Good. So Argentina, South Africa and Australia, yeah. they're going to go into quarantine. They're going to have a facility given to them where they've got access to fields, access to weights rooms. They're going to quarantine for two weeks and they're going to play the whole comp in New Zealand. How amazing Quality. would that be? Yeah. Not only for us, yeah, but I think for rugby in general. World, for, world rugby. The spotlight is just so bright on Southern Hemisphere rugby it at the is, moment. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure whether we're fully delivering. We'll maybe go into a bit more detail about that. But I think if you can get internationals where you've literally got the best players in the world, yeah, especially the South Africans who have just won the Rugby yeah, World Cup, yeah. the Australians who are in absolute a disarray. Mess, disarray at the moment, um, and the Argentinas to see, I mean, they've got some great players who, yeah, who will be but dying to play some rugby. Are they all gone, though? But doesn't they? They'll come back for the for the uh, for yeah. the national side, won't they? Especially for this competition, where True. nowhere else in the world can do anything. Yeah, it'll just be awesome. It'll yeah. be like what four weeks or five weeks of unadult. It's like another World Cup. Yeah, oh, the unbelievable, unbelievable. Um, so can't wait for that. If that happens, if that doesn't happen, then that rugby league game could be on the cards. Obviously, there's the north and south game that we're gonna we're gonna yeah. be playing or not we're playing they're well, going to play I wouldn't want to play it I think uh, and then there's the the NPC which would be a bit of a letdown but I'm sure all the well, big names are going to all the big names yeah, are going to be available aren't you'd they you'd hope so especially Jordan, if there's no international Jordan Tafur could be back in the Crusaders mate yeah maybe that'd be nice wouldn't it uh, right mate we are going to move on yes to and review the games this week's games first game up was the Crusaders versus the Highlanders. Now, I thought... 